After having my surgery a year and a half ago, I can tell you I can bike ride, hike, run, everything with no pain, no limp. Before I had my hip replacement, I wasn't able to uh, walk very well. I couldn't wash my feet in the shower. I wasn't able to drive a car comfortably. Uh, just about everything I did was painful, including swimming. After my hip replacement surgery, I, there is nothing that I can't do. The surgeons, doctors, nurses, and therapists of the orthopedics department at CPMC will have you on your feet in no time after your total hip replacement, if you'll follow a few simple guidelines. But first, what is total hip replacement? Welcome to the Joint Replacement Center at California Pacific Medical Center. We're one of the largest volume joint replacement hospitals in California. Our surgical staff consists of only fellowship trained subspecialists in joint replacement surgery. Our joint replacement team is specially trained to assist you through your hospitalization. Your replacement will be made of various materials, including metal, plastic, or ceramic, depending on your particular need. It consists of a stem, a ball, and a socket. Your surgeon will make a minimally invasive incision along your upper thigh. The stem will then be inserted into your femur or thigh bone. The attached ball will be fitted into a matching socket, which is then press fit into your pelvis. The surgery itself usually takes less than two hours, but a successful hip replacement begins long before you enter the hospital. There are lots of things you can do to make your life easier and your recovery faster after your surgery. Start with your home. You'll be using a walker or crutches when you leave the hospital. So position your furniture to make sure that you can move around freely. Remove throw rugs that might trip you up. And make sure you have a non-skid bath mat. Place items you need every day at arm level between your waist and shoulders to avoid bending over and stock up on easily prepared foods. You'll need firm chairs with arms because they're easiest to get in and out of safely. You may need to raise your bed if its edge is lower than your knees for safer access after your hip surgery. Are there stairs in your home? If so, how many? Is there a handrail? Consider whether there'll be a barrier to your daily activities. If you'll have a caregiver or helper in your home or just someone to do your shopping and laundry while you recuperate, have them visit www.cpmc.org, learning about your health for tips on how to help. It's also critical that you prepare yourself physically for a successful surgery and a speedy recovery. It's always a good idea to quit smoking, but it's a great idea before surgery. Get a full physical exam from your primary care physician no more than a month before your procedure to make sure you're healthy enough for your replacement surgery. You may need lab work, blood tests, x-rays, an EKG, or other procedures. A CPMC nurse will contact you to arrange for any tests you may require. If you need any dental work, consult your orthopedic surgeon to see if it should wait until well after your operation to avoid potential infections. Also, discuss any medications you may be using. Your surgeon will talk with you about your options should you require blood during or after surgery and may suggest that you donate one to two units of blood for your use. Also, it's important to pre-register for your surgery with a hospital by phone or online. You'll recover faster if you begin strengthening your leg muscles before your surgery with these special exercises. Quad sets. Tighten your muscles on the thigh of your extended leg and count aloud to five. Repeat with your other thigh. Do this 10 times, twice a day. Gluteal squeeze. Tighten your buttocks while counting to 10. Repeat this 10 times, two times a day. Heel slide. Bend your knee. Slide your heel toward your buttocks and hold for five seconds. Then slide your heel back out. Repeat with the opposite leg, 10 times, twice daily. Long arc quad. While seated, straighten your surgery leg and hold it up for three seconds, 10 times, twice a day. 
repeat with the opposite leg. Ankle pump. Bend your ankles to move your feet up and down as though you were walking for 20 repetitions, twice daily. Do not do any of these exercises if the exercise is painful. Beyond these exercises, you'll need to follow a few instructions as your surgery date approaches. Call your orthopedic surgeon to confirm the day, time, and place of your surgery. Arrange for someone to drive you home from the hospital and stay with you at home that day and possibly longer. Take no products containing aspirin for a week before your surgery. Avoid alcohol 24 hours beforehand and do not eat or drink anything after midnight the night before you enter the hospital. On the day of your hip replacement, you must check into the hospital two hours before your surgery. Bring the following to the hospital. Paperwork from your doctor, your insurance card, power of attorney for health care if you have one, a list of any medications you are currently taking, including prescriptions, over-the-counter drugs, and herbal supplements with their dosages. Bring the medications, too, in their original containers so nurses can tell what you're taking. However, you will not bring these into the hospital with you. The nursing staff will dispense your medications during your stay. At the hospital, your board-certified CPMC anesthesiologist will talk with you about your anesthesia choices and come up with a plan based on your health status. With regional anesthesia, your anesthesiologist will give you an injection which will numb your lower body. You may be awake or sedated during your procedure, but you will not feel nor see your surgery. Alternatively, your anesthesiologist may recommend general anesthesia. In this case, you will be asleep for your procedure while your health status is constantly monitored. CPMC, likewise, monitors all hospital procedures to comply with the national patient safety goals. So the staff will be asking you a lot of questions to verify your identity, the side of your hip replacement, and other details about your surgery. Your friends and family may wait for you in the surgical waiting room where the staff will keep them informed about your procedure. Your surgeon will see them when your operation is finished. In the post-anesthesia care unit after surgery, you'll find you've been fitted with the latest medical equipment to ensure your safe recovery. You may wear a thromboembolic deterrent or TED stockings that use compression to prevent swelling of your legs and blood clots by speeding blood flow back to your heart. A wedge pillow keeps you from crossing your legs in bed and dislocating your new hip. There may be a trapeze over your bed to help you change positions. A urinary catheter may be used to empty your bladder while you're not fully mobile. It will be removed in one to two days. And you'll have an intravenous or IV line connected for a day or two for medicines and fluids. The nursing staff will make sure all this equipment is working properly and carefully monitor your recovery for any surgical complications. Soon you'll move to your hospital room where your CPMC team will get you started on life with your new hip. Your team will watch you closely for signs of post-operative infection such as redness or drainage at your hip incision or fever above 101 degrees. You'll begin three days of regular blood tests and, if needed, receive transfusions from blood you may have donated earlier. The nurses will keep track of medications that may be necessary to prevent blood clots, infection, or pain. And you may need to learn to inject anti-clotting medicine so you can do it yourself at home later. You'll also be managing any pain yourself using a patient-controlled analgesic or PCA pump to control your own dosage of pain medicines as needed. Don't worry, the pump won't let you over-medicate. Manage pain before it becomes severe enough to inhibit any recovery activities. Less pain will make it easier to concentrate on getting around safely on your new hip. If your hip pain suddenly gets worse or you experience chest pain or have trouble breathing, tell your nurses immediately. You may resume your regular diet when you can drink clear liquids. Constipation is not unusual after surgery. Increased fluid and fiber intake and stool softeners will offer relief. Your surgeon will check on your recovery from the replacement surgery. Nurses will continue to monitor your overall health. If necessary, they'll help you shift resting positions every two hours and remind you to cough and deep breathe at these intervals as well. 
By day two or three, you should feel well enough to stop using your PCA pump and begin oral pain medications like Vicodin or Tylenol. Starting the day after surgery, a physical therapist will see you once or twice daily to continue the hip exercises shown earlier. These exercises will be within the safe range of motion for your new hip. To practice safe movement until your hip replacement has fully healed, you'll need to know these hip precautions to avoid dislocating your new hip. It's very important that you do not bend your new hip past 90 degrees and do not cross your legs and never turn your surgery leg inward. A physical therapist will help you incorporate these safety guidelines into your daily movements. To get out of bed, and you should spend time out of bed each day, move your legs at an angle over the edge of the bed while raising your torso with your elbows and arms until you're sitting up on the edge of the bed. Be careful not to turn your surgery leg inward. Reverse this movement to get into bed. Sit on the edge of the bed at an angle Use your arms to walk your hips onto the bed, then lean back on your elbows and bring both legs up onto the bed. While in bed, keep your knees apart with your wedge pillow. To sit down in a chair, back your walker up to the chair and move your surgery leg slightly forward. Make sure you can feel the seat with your strong leg. Grip the arms of the chair with both hands and lower yourself into the seat, maintaining your 90 degree hip angle. While seated, keep your surgery knee lower than your hip. Place your feet flat on the floor and keep your knees separated. Do not cross your legs or ankles or turn your surgery leg inward. To get up from a chair, holding this chair's arms, slide forward to the edge of the seat, again moving your surgery leg forward. Again, maintaining your 90 degree hip angle, push down on the arms and lift yourself out of the seat, grasping your walker as you stand up. When using your walker, grasp the walker firmly with both hands and push it slightly ahead of you, then step forward with your surgery leg. Lean onto the walker and bring your strong leg forward to complete the step. To turn with your walker, make turns slowly by degrees. Turn your feet one at a time, very slightly in the direction you want to go, following with the walker. Divide each turn into a series of small movements that won't turn your surgery leg inward. And now the stairs. To climb stairs, grip the railing with one hand and steady yourself with a cane in the other. Step up one stair, leading with your strong leg, then lift your surgery leg up to the same stair. When descending stairs, again, steady yourself with a handrail and cane, but this time, lead with your surgery leg and lower your strong leg to the same stair. To get into a car, have the driver slide the front passenger seat all the way back and recline the seat back as far as it will go. Back into the seat as you would a chair. Walk your hips onto the seat using your arms as when getting into bed. Recline on the seat bringing your legs into the car, then bring your seat back upright. Reverse this movement to get out of a car. Recline your seat back, then angle your legs out the open door, sitting up on your arms as you go. Grip the door frame to help pull yourself upright. Your occupational therapist will give you your reaching tools and three-in-one commode in your hospital room and teach you to maintain your hip precautions in your daily activities. When using the toilet at home, the three-in-one commode placed over your toilet will keep your hips above your knees. Get on and off the commode the same way you get in and out of a chair, keeping your knees apart and maintaining your 90-degree hip angle. When bathing, your precautions don't let you lean forward, so use your long-handled sponge to wash your lower legs. Showering may be easier if you're seated. Your therapist will decide if you need a shower seat and show you how to enter your shower safely. When dressing, as with bathing, you'll use reaching tools to dress below the waist. Pull on your underwear and pants with your reacher. Use your sock aid for your socks and your shoehorn to slide into your footwear. Elastic laces make this easier with tie shoes. Your reacher and shoehorn will also help you undress. Dress your surgery leg first and undress it last. 
try to wear clothes and shoes that are easy to put on and take off and practice with them soon after surgery. When working at a sink or counter, remember not to bend over too far and don't twist at the hips when reaching for cooking items. Use your reacher instead. Most patients go home after three to four days. You and your surgeon will decide what's best for you. Usually you'll be discharged if you know the signs of surgical complications. Increasing pain in your new hip, pain or swelling in your calf or leg, redness, heat or drainage at your surgery site, fever over 101 degrees. Also, you must know all the medications you're taking, their purpose and possible side effects. And finally, before you're discharged, your therapist must confirm that you can complete the following daily activities while maintaining your hip precautions. You must be able to get in and out of bed by yourself. Use the toilet on your own. Dress yourself using your reaching tools without help. Stand and work at a sink or counter for 10 minutes. Walk 50 feet with your walker. Get in and out of a car with help. Climb up and down 12 stairs with help standing by if you have stairs at home. In some cases, your surgeon and therapists may decide you need more treatment or rehabilitation and recommend that you enter a post-acute unit or a local skilled nursing facility for more therapy. If needed, a case manager will arrange for any home equipment or therapy. Before you leave the hospital, make a follow-up appointment with your surgeon and have friends and family bring you some pillows to build up the car seat for the ride home. You may not take a cab or public transit home from the hospital. Your surgery team will keep your recovery on track when you get home. You'll have a few home visits from a physical therapist who will help you get around your home with your walker and cane and teach you to safely negotiate uneven surfaces and stairs. At your bedside, your three-in-one commode is a readily accessible toilet when a container is placed under the seat. In your bathroom, the commode straddles your home fixture so you can get on and off the toilet as you would an armchair. If you want to take a shower, it's okay if your incision is not draining. But baths are not allowed while you're observing your hip precautions because your incision should be kept as clean and dry as possible. And if you have stitches or staples, they'll be removed 10 to 14 days after surgery. Depending on your surgeon's judgment, you'll need to observe your hip precautions for about three months. Avoid driving for four to six weeks and consult your surgeon if you must remain seated for more than 90 minutes while traveling. In general, avoid sitting for long periods to prevent swelling in your feet and legs. Remember, if you carefully exercise your new hip while maintaining your hip precautions, your CPMC orthopedic team will have you moving through your life pain-free and with renewed motion and confidence.